Let's take a look at our view controller as it is at the moment. Notice how as we're adding more and more code, the role of the view controller is expanding and becoming less well defined. For example, our view controller is calculating the BMI as well as rounding the BMI to one decimal place. So this is a good place to pause and reconsider how we're organizing our code. Our app will only get more and more complex going forwards. In the final version of our BMI calculator, we're able to change the height and weight, and depending on the BMI that gets calculated, we'll end up with a different colored background and some different advice text. So if we think about how we would organize this information, the advice, the BMI, and the background color, well, that seems like it's very much within the M of the MVC. And that's what we're gonna do in this lesson. We're gonna refactor our code to bring it in line with the MVC design pattern. The first thing we should do is therefore create our M or the model. And there it is in our project, we've already created a model folder for you. So all we have to do is right click on it and create a new file inside. Now in this case, we're gonna be creating a new Swift file. And then we're going to call this file calculator brain because it's going to be responsible for handling all of the logic of calculating our BMI. So inside this new file, I want you to create a new struct called calculator brain. So see if you can remember how to do that, or if not, take a look at the Swift cheat sheet to remind you. Now, of course, to create a new struct, we need the struct keyword, and we can even use the code snippet from Xcode to help us. The struct name is going to be calculator brain, and inside the calculator brain, we're going to create all of the properties and methods that are required to calculate our BMI, to interpret our BMI, provide an advice, and provide the appropriate color. So now if we go into our calculate view controller, let's rip out all of the parts which it's not supposed to be doing. So including the BMI value, as well as the calculation and also turning it into a string part. And instead, we're going to create a new object called calculator brain from our calculator brain struct and initialize it with our set of parentheses. Now that we've got access to this calculator brain object, we're going to go down into our calculate pressed method and we're going to say calculator brain dot calculate BMI. And we're going to pass over the height as one of the inputs and weight as one of the other inputs. Now, this will give us an error right now, but don't worry about it for now. And down here, instead of getting the BMI value, which doesn't exist anymore, which is why it's saying use of unresolved identifier, we're going to get our calculator brain to provide that value. So we'll call get BMI value. Now, of course, we don't have these methods yet. We don't have a calculate BMI that takes a height and a weight and then later on is able to fetch the BMI for us. Well, that is the challenge for you. So pause the video and see if you can make these two errors go away without writing any code inside the view controller other than these two lines, as well as initializing the calculated brain so keep the code exactly as I have here. And by changing the calculator brain, see if you can make this code work and make our error go away. Pause the video now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create this method, calculate BMI over in our calculator brain. So let's create a function called calculate BMI and the height needs to be a float variable and the weight also needs to be a float. And then once those things are passed in, we're going to calculate the BMI. So let BMI equal the weight divided by height times height. Now that we've got the BMI calculated, that error will disappear. 
So let's address the next one. So we also need a method called get BMI value. So I'm going to copy that and it should be able to provide us a value in the form of a string because in our result view controller, we're expecting a string. So we need to make this method inside our calculator brain. So let's go ahead and create a method called get BMI value. And it, of course, has to return or output a string data type. So how do we get hold of this BMI value that was calculated in this other method? Well, why don't we go ahead and create a property for our struct, our calculator brain? Let's call it BMI and let's make it a floating point number, which is equal to 0.0, .0 to begin with. Now, instead of creating this BMI here as a constant, we're simply going to set this BMI to be equal to the calculated BMI. Now that it's stored in this variable, we can get hold of it in our function here and we can format it so that we end up with a BMI to one decimal place. Now, you can, of course, choose a less wordy name than I have, but I just want to make sure that when you look at this, you know exactly what it's trying to do. And this is going to be a formatted string, which is going to be accurate to one decimal place. So, so dot one F, and then we're going to pass in the value of BMI as a float, and we should end up with a string, which we can use as the output. So returning our BMI to one decimal place. Now, the final problem we have is that we get the error. Of course, BMI is a property of our struct. And because structs are immutable, in order to change it, we must destroy the old copy and create a new one. So we have to mark this method that changes our property as mutating. And now we should be able to take a look at our calculate view controller all of the errors should go away. And if we run our app, we should have exactly the same values as before. And that's the solution to the challenge. We're now calculating the BMI in a separate struct and we're returning the BMI to the calculate view controller as a string. Now let's take a closer look at our struct. In particular, let's think a little bit more carefully about how we're handling this BMI property. Currently, our BMI property in our calculator brain has a default value of 0.0, .0 to begin with. And we did this because when our calculator brain object gets initialized from this struct, we must have a value for this BMI property. We can either do it here or if we simply declared it as a float data type, well, then we would have to initialize it when we create our calculator brain right here. And round about now, I'm going to get an error right here saying missing an argument for the parameter BMI. But if you think about it at this point in time, I don't actually know what the BMI is because I have to wait for the user to toggle the sliders, then press the calculate button before I can actually get a value. So it really doesn't make sense to provide a value for the BMI when we initialize it. So how can we represent this a little bit better? In reality, what this BMI value really should be is it should really be equal to nil to begin with. And only when we actually calculate the BMI should it actually get a value. So does this remind you of something when we have to work with nil values? Of course, we need to turn this into an optional. But as soon as BMI becomes a optional floating point number, well, we've got errors down the line. And previously, all that we've done is simply to just force unwrap when it's safe to do so. But in this case, is it really safe to unwrap this BMI? Because right now, if this method get BMI value gets triggered before this method, where we actually fill the BMI with a value at this point, it's still nil. So if we're trying to turn a nil value to a one decimal place string, this is going to crash big time on us. And you can confirm this if you simply just go into the view did load of our calculate view controller and call that calculator brain 
method called get BMI value. And right now, if I run my app, pretty much as soon as my view loads up, my app is going to crash. And of course, it crashes on this line right here because unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And we can see right now this BMI value right here is equal to nil. So therefore, this BMI one decimal place value, of course, is not going to be able to get calculated. So let's go ahead and remove this offending line of code. And we should also remove this exclamation mark, which force unwraps this optional. So how can we solve this problem instead? Are there other ways of working with optionals? Well, to learn more about that, head over to the next lesson where we're going to do a deep dive on Swift optionals.